Hey what's up guys, this is Tristan, and about a year ago I made a video about Berserk, talking a little bit about the Black Swordsman arc, mainly about the Golden Age arc, and about my thoughts on it, and about how I really like that arc. And recently I read volumes 14 through 21, which covered the Conviction arc, the arc following the Golden Age arc, so I'm going to be talking about that in this video and giving a little bit of review on it. Also, if you haven't read the Conviction arc yet, you're fine to watch this video because I'm not going to be spoiling anything. But if you haven't read the Golden Age arc, you should just save this video for later because I am going to be spoiling that arc. If that was you on the phone and you on the bus, then who was flickering the lights? <laughs> Nosferatu! So the Conviction arc actually starts off with a mini-arc called the Lost Children arc, which goes from volumes 14 through 17, and besides the Iron Chain Knights being introduced in that arc, it really has nothing to do with the rest of the Conviction arc, or really just the series in general. It's really just its own little thing, its own little mini-arc, and I thought it was fun, but it definitely wasn't on par with the Golden Age arc or even the rest of the Conviction arc. And for me, the Lost Children arc feels more like how the Black Swordsman arc was, where it's not really a humongous story in its own. Like, it definitely still has some great themes and some amazing action, and it was a blast to read. But still, it really feels like preparation and more of a transition into a larger story. With that being said, even though I don't think that the Lost Children arc was as great in terms of writing as some of the other stuff in Berserk, I do think that it was still a blast and it was just as wild as Berserk has ever been. I do think that it was a nice tie-in between the Golden Age arc and the rest of the Conviction arc because it would have been kind of weird if it was some big heavy stuff with the end of the Golden Age arc and then immediately going into the Father Mosge stuff. I think that would have been a little too heavy so it was kind of nice to have a little fun arc in there to tie the two together. The Lost Children arc slash the Conviction arc as a whole had a surprisingly large amount of comedy in it which I was surprised by because Berserk is probably the darkest and edgiest series I've ever read, and it has some of the wackiest and goofiest comedy with Puck and even a Cedro once that stuff comes in with the rest of the Conviction arc, and it felt pretty out of place at times, mainly in the Lost Children arc, because it would be Gus, you know, destroying hundreds of elves really violently, and then the next scene it would cut to some Disney-style comedy with Puck, and it really fell out of place there. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. But it was a hoot and a holler, and I was definitely cracking up about it. And I actually really enjoyed the comedy, because Berserk gets really depressing sometimes, gets really dark sometimes, so it's nice to see just a break and all that stuff, to see some nice, good-hearted goofs and gaffs, and Kentaro Miura is pretty good at that, and I'm glad he delivered on that stuff. So those are pretty much my main thoughts on the Lost Children stuff, but now I'm going to be talking about the rest of the Conviction arc, and this is where things really get good. I mean, the Lost Children arc, it was fun, but after this is when things actually get crazy, and if I had to give this a score, I'd probably give the Lost Children arc like a 6.5 out of 10, and the rest of the Conviction arcs like a, probably like a 9.5 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10, somewhere around there, but overall I'm not a huge fan of giving stuff scores, because then it kind of nullifies everything I say, and people are just like, well, if it's under an 8 out of 10, that means it's bad. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, that's probably a rough estimate as to where I would give it. When this humongous rectangular priest, Father Mosgeus, was introduced as the main villain to this arc, I was a little skeptical. I didn't really like his character design, and I wasn't sure how he was going to be compelling, but his relation with the Iron Chain Knights and Farnese, I think that's how you pronounce her name, and just the new concepts of how people can be turned into half apostles, and then once they die, they kind of fade back into human. I just love that stuff, and that was just done fantastically in this arc, and man, I was impressed. I was expecting it to be just a decent arc, nothing too big, but man, like once the Lost Children stuff is over, it actually got phenomenal, and it was actually on par with the Golden Age arc in my opinion. Something that I love about this arc is that it's largely about how the characters were affected and how they've moved on from the events of the Eclipse. For instance, Casca has pretty much been traumatized and in a state of shock based on what she saw and how she was treated by Griffith. As for Guts, he literally covered himself in dark clothing and weapons and acted on anger and fear of people getting close to him because he literally has a curse mark that attracts demons. And Rickard has pretty much accepted that the Band of the Hawk is done and that he needs to move on. The biggest difference though between Rickard and Guts and Casca is that Rickard still had something to go back to. I mean, he still had Erica and his old man to go back to, 
whereas with Guts and Casca, they literally lost everything in the Eclipse. There is a common theme in Berserk where pretty much every time Guts sees something that either reminds him of the Eclipse or Griffith, he just smiles and laughs at it instead of mourning, and this is mainly because he doesn't really have time to mourn over it because he's seen every bad thing imaginable since he was born, and he's trying to think of this as just another tragedy in his way, even though he obviously knows it's a lot more than that. It was also really nice to see Princess Charlotte reappear in this arc, because she was easily one of my favorite parts in the Golden Age arc. I think that her story with her father was really interesting, even though the King wasn't my favorite character after Volume 9. I'm not going to go in depth into that just because it's kind of nasty, but obviously you probably know what I'm talking about if you've read the Golden Age arc. She didn't make the biggest appearance in this arc, so hopefully she makes bigger appearances in the next two arcs. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for my main thoughts on the Conviction arc. I know there are some things that I didn't talk about because I was trying to keep this video relatively spoiler free. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to slap the like button subscribe, drop a comment on this video, and I hope you guys like my shirt. It's actually from the manga, The Flowers of Evil. If you haven't read the series, definitely check it out. I mean, I reread it recently, and oh boy, it's pretty crazy. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's up there. And with all that being said and done, I will see you guys next time for my top 20 manga list. Is it